This is smithy.tv. Thanks for tuning in. You're listening slash watching to... Pff, listen to me, I can't even speak. You're listening slash watching... I did it again. Stop it. No. You gotta go. You gotta run with it. This is gold. Get around with it now. Fuck it. Right? Okay. You're... I'm Jeremy Lalonde, and this is Five Questions with Jeremy Lalonde. And with me tonight is the handsome and equally foggly challenged Dane Clark. Hi, 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 hi. Who, and if you don't know, you will soon. He's a pretty goddamn great filmmaker. Now you blush. God. Thank God I didn't shave today. Is that hard? Well, you gotta, you gotta do the... Oh, you got the neck beard? Yeah? That's nice. The little neck beard? Yeah. How often do you shave? Uh, oh, I never, I never straight shave. I just use like with like, a straight razor. Yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> like, e- even with even with Abe, like a Beck. No, not a Beck. No. What do you do? You just I just do the head buzz, the head trimmer. Ah, like on, like on the like zero the, zero. Yeah, because it doesn't it doesn't grow much. And you keep it. Everything is always the same length. Yours is longer than mine. Mine's a little bit. I trimmed recently. You're younger than me, though, aren't you? A little bit. We don't need to talk about it. Not by much. Yeah. No. I trimmed the other day, and my son was with me. Yeah. And he said, Daddy, you missed a spot. And I said, where? And he said, you're back. Because <laughs> he's an <laughs> asshole at three. What a stupid kid. Yeah, good for him, though. I'm like, well played. Nice timing. Good setup. Well done. We'll keep you. Yeah, we'll keep you. Yeah. You just gave me a tweet. Thank you very much. Yeah, your tweets about your kids are some of my favorite. Oh, thanks, buddy. For what that's worth. For what that's worth. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take that in a bag of chips, and I got myself a meal. I read it in the morning, I have myself a chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> so you just like it's just wall over do you do sometimes just the yeah, beard no, sometimes no once a week keep it no like twice twice a week you yeah. in the head too yeah wow and I really should have done it this morning I, I woke up and I was looking at your site and stuff and it was just you like, look great oh right oh right they might have a camera but then I didn't have time and so I was like fuck it mm, I do like, I, this is like once a week what do you like a Gillette thing. Oh. Sponsor me. Gillette. No. But what's that? That's like a two. This is like, you know, I have a different, like. It's tough because I I probably let it go like a month. Yeah. And then it starts getting stringy because I have terrible thin hair. And then I'm like, I look terrible. And then I just do the whole thing in the beard. Once I can start chewing on my mustache, how attractive is that? (laughs) But I know it's time to. Once I sit there, I'm like, oh, I can put it in my mouth. Then I know it's time to. But the mustache just have to trim. That's the hardest part. You can never get it the same. You can't grow a mustache. No. I, well, I, I never have. Like, does it like, this is impressive? Well, it, not on its own. If I, if you took the rest of it off, it'd be kind of right. Right. I don't think it would work well. Did you do November like that guy? No, because then I gotta start from fresh. Are we allowed to pretend that he's really here? Yeah, yeah. We we reference him. <laughs> Cut to camera with Ryan. <laughs> Did you do it? Nice. Look at me. I'm directing from the sidelines. <laughs> Um, Which one's the camera? If, if you're only listening to this through the audio, oh. you're not getting the benefit of the brilliance that's going on right now with our little camera moves. All the webcam, right on the computer. Yeah. The pervert cam, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't, don't cut to Ryan right now. <laughs> yeah, awkward. <laughs> um, no, I didn't do November. I mean, I, got, I, I like to. I'm a big fan of prostates. Yeah, yeah. Sp- particularly with my own. Yeah, they're great. So, Gosh. yeah. To, yeah. Well, there you go. I appreciate that. <laughs> but, you know, so I, I support prostates. Um, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, I got to start. I can't. If I just shaved this off and just had the mustache, people would call bullshit. Like, they say right. it doesn't count, right? Yeah, yeah. So you I have, have to start, start from scratch. Yeah. And I couldn't just. Uh, then I'd have. Can I just shave that off? Right. Do I have to go the. At the part, my, my son desperately keeps on asking me to shave my entire face off, and my wife won't let me. Mm. And when she's. Was the last time you were better? With a bear or bear? Uh, both. <laughs> it was the same day. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> when's the last story? time I shaved my beard? It's probably been, I think it was like back in Niagara College. Jeez. I think I did it for like a short film. Wow. So, like two years You're ago. Method actor no. in Niagara College. No, it was, yeah, but it was like, you know, because I was playing a hobo and then it was like a fantasy sequence where I was like a businessman. Uh. So I had to. <laughs> Lose the hobo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, I, I want to say it was at least, it was, maybe it was back then. I don't think I've shaved it since. I've had some kind of facial hair. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used to not have a mustache. I used to do like this little thing that went around like that. Yeah. And then I got sick like two years ago and everything grew in. And then I was like, eh, it's not so bad. <laughs> I'm going to leave that. And that's going to save me at least 
10 minutes once a week. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. Yeah, it's good timing. Yeah. That's enough time to crank out a script. Enough about... Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's how I know. It's like, first draft's done. Yeah. It's time to shave again. <laughs> it's a little ritual. Uh, so enough about my facial hair. Oh. We're here to talk about your facial hair. Okay. Which we already did, too. So uh, you went to Niagara College as well. I did. That's where we met and fell in love. It is where we met and yeah. fell in love. You were a year ahead of... You were the year ahead of me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was really advanced. Yeah. Or, not because you're older. older. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he slept with everyone. Um, but you went from that, and then the, coming out of it, you did some. You were a casting assistant, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Pretty How'd that go? It. Uh, it was interesting. I wanted to be. I wanted to get into casting because I didn't want a PA. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to do like sixteen-hour days. You didn't want to get be a coffee drive. Bitch. Yeah, I didn't want to be a coffee bitch, and like I don't have a sense of direction. So I just feel like an idiot. So I try to avoid walking around with like, coffees, not knowing where they go. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Who, yeah, and it's, they get cold, and people get pissy, and then you get fired. So like I PA'd once on one thing, and it was the absolute worst. People just yelling at you, and that's just not how I wanted to be. So I went, I wanted to be a casting assistant where I got yelled at. But it was like it was just in it was in one room. So and a specific something. kind of yell. Yeah, like yeah. I knew my coordinates, so there was something that was just a little more comforting about that. Um, but it was fun. I, I learned a lot about talent, actors, casting, uh, and I got to read scripts. And that's like, that's what I wanted to do. I was like, I want a job where I can read scripts. And I like scripts and actors. <laughs> what can I do since I'm not going to make a movie for another 10 years? Uh, uh, was it, so was it 10 years? No. It was less. Not counting the shorts, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you spent most. I mean, because your stuff that's been produced, you know, first from that was was as right as a writer. Yeah. Um, so first thing was back in '93. Yeah, it was with Fresh Mark. Mark. Yeah, Mark Montefiore. I, I I don't mean the short change or name drop, but there you go. Yeah, he's a big deal. Yeah, he's kind of a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna sit in the chair at some point. Whoa. Once I blackmail. That's gonna be obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> so it's a whole lot of me, me. And, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, fuck, now I'm an asshole. <laughs> Look what we did. Um, so, Sorry, Mark. was the plan always to, ju to, to direct to, or is that something you discovered along the way you wanted to do? No, it was in college. Everybody wants to be a director. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, I'll do it. And then um, in college, I, I found that I didn't... I mean, I really liked it, but I didn't know... What do I want to say? Um... Something about me didn't love it, but I think what I didn't love was the script mm. more so because I didn't, didn't know how to write mm. and I didn't understand structure and stuff. And I, I don't think, actually, I know that they didn't even teach us structure properly. No offense, now you're college. Yeah, but, but you, yeah, you sure didn't teach us on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was more just like not loving what the material kind of deal because it didn't it didn't make sense but I didn't know why but now that you love your own stuff now that I that, and now yourself that my own stuff is hopefully so, yourself a little bit uh, a, a little bit like more than I did before yeah but I still don't I still don't like myself but that's why that's you co-write with someone that you like. exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. you like the stuff that she does and hopefully yeah. she likes the stuff that you write yeah. and in the middle you compromise her stuff is way better so it just evens out I steal everything from my wife and my kids. Well, you yeah. have to. Yeah. And, yeah. The, and they have no intention to work in the film industry that I know Perfect. of. So, yeah, they don't mind. You get all the credit. Yeah. <laughs> well played. Hashtag screw your family. Um, when so, sorry. No, you go right ahead. I was just going to interview you. No, yeah, yeah, your, it's your turn. Yeah, okay. Five questions with Dane Clark. When did you, did you know you wanted to direct all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I like to, I'm anal. I know that. And uh, I, there's, well, I'm not going to yeah. go there. Right. Yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. It was always in my, in my path was going through editing instead because it was like, yeah. it, was, it was the same thing as I didn't really want to PA. Yeah. Uh, the one job I ended up PAing, I ended up, be, you know, convincing them to let me edit the film. Smart. Yeah, it was great. It was Mark Montefiore worked on that as well. Ooh. What was the it? Mark, um, it was originally called The Lookalike, and then I think it was en ended up being called Bolly Double. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, uh, it was like I was like I got the I was on there for like 
three days as a PA. Yeah. <clears throat> and then the line producer or production manager saw that I had like editing on my resume mm -hmm. and said, hey, we haven't hired an assistant editor yet. I was like, great. So I, they hired me to do that. And then, um, and I, I knew they weren't hiring an editor until after the film was wrapped. Right. So while I was doing like the dailies and all that kind of shit, I started cutting the film together. Hmm. And so two days after the film wrapped production, I invited the producer and the director over to my place and I said, hey, I want to show you something. And I showed them an entire cut of the movie. Nice. Uh, and then they hired me to, and so I went from being a PA <laughs> to editing. Well played. Yeah. Nice. Well, and I came to I'm like, look, it's like, you know, if you, if you don't hate it, you're going to get me a hell of a lot cheaper than you're going to get someone else. Yeah, yeah. And it worked out. So that was my way to trick them into letting me smart cut a movie. Nice. I don't think it's a good way in. Well, it's another way. It's like it's it's similar because I was always writing and that kind of stuff. And for yeah. me, it's like at least it's a, it's a creative way to break in. Mm -hmm. You're still doing the creative stuff. You're getting to. You're not just like getting coffee or yeah. driving a truck around. Yeah. Um, but and you're and you're getting to like hang out with producers yeah, and directors sure. and kind of and and getting to know those people on that level. So for me, yeah. it was kind of like a way to network and also have a fun job at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Well played. Well, you know. Yeah. So far. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right. It's good. So then, so in between that, so then when did you go to the CFC? I went to the CFC in 2008. But before that, I took some, I took the screenwriting courses at Humber. There were like three or four of those uh, taught by Nika. Nika Railski. Probably just screwed up her name. Anyway, she's, it's Crazy, she's crazy lady. She used to write on like Fraggle Rock and stuff, and she loved pantsuits. I just bought the entire box set of Fraggle Rock from. So my it's kid. still good. You know what? I haven't watched it in a while. I, I got the Amazon had a ridiculously low sale, so I, I picked yeah. it up for my kid. So nice. he'll get it. Like it came as individual seasons. I think I'm gonna slowly give it to him. Nice. Presents keeps on giving. Spread it out. Well, yeah, only until yeah. it runs out. Right, and then but, yeah. it runs. But right. I don't know if it's still good or not. I haven't I'm watched curious. it in forever. Yeah. But hopefully, I love that show. Yeah, I love it as a kid too. But I don't know mm. if it stands up. I hope. I mean, most of the Muppet stuff I watch stands up still. I haven't. I haven't yeah. revisited like the the Muppet shows and not enjoyed them. So no, you you just get the different jokes. Yeah, it's but true. I, you get the layers of it. More yeah, than, but I don't know. But because the adult the, jokes. But I wonder if the because the Fraggles I think were aimed more towards kids than yeah. So we got a nod over here from the pervert cam. <laughs> 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 Again, if you're just listening to this, you're not getting the full breadth of the jokes. <laughs> but it's your own fault. That's why you should tune in and watch. Yeah. Um, so so I, wrote, I wrote my first screenplay through feature screenplay through those Humber courses, and then I applied to the film center, and I got rejected. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anyone that's applied there that gets in the first time. Uh, you do. My girlfriend did. Had girls. Girls. I'm not, I'd stop myself before I went further because I like Lindsay. Yeah, I'm not going to say she's okay. filthy about Lindsay. No. I'm not going to make a blowjob joke about your <laughs> not, fiance. Not yet. That'd be terrible. Not until like the second part of the hour. Exactly. <laughs> when things start getting crazy. There's yeah, a joke. There's a, there's a question here that asks if if your fiance got into a, a school institution by. I'm going to stop oh. now. I'm going to stop it. We're going to move on from there. Jesus Christ, how do we even move on from that? I'm sorry, I'm going to keep on going. So, CFC. Uh, what was it? I got rejected. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Okay, we stuck uh, Because I bombed my interview. How'd you bomb it? Um, I'm awkward. <laughs> and so I walked into, like, a room that was, you know, a little bit bigger than this, and it had a table much bigger than this. And there was, like, eight or ten people sitting around it. And it's, like, people that I know that... You know, I don't know them personally, but like I know their resumes, and I know that they've made movies that I enjoy. Right, and, and so you just automatically just like froze up. Yeah, you know, it was just I was just like sound even dumber than I do today. Did they have a like bowl of M and M's? No. Okay. Yeah, they didn't have that test. Yeah, the yeah. Vienna told me about that test. Right. Yeah, they had. Oh no, they just offered me water, and I was like, yeah, sure. And you took it. Good for you. But actually, it was actually they didn't even offer it. It was just sitting in front. But you took it. I took it. Nice. Yeah. Because just like I do now, I drink when I'm nervous. Are you it's nervous scotch, right now? Scotch is delicious. Yeah. Mm, I mean, a little bit, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Because you're awkward. But not. Cause just because I'm awkward. <laughs> but not because like I know you is guys. It, is it awkward because you're tall and gangly? Yeah. And that's that part of it? I think so. It just comes with it? Yeah. 
I just like being behind the camera. I never had acting aspirations mm. or public speaking aspirations. But you do well with it. Well, you're I doing try. fine. I'm trying. I've tried to get better. I've yeah. Tried to improve. I went to Toastmasters for a bit. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's good times. For for the sole purpose of being able to just just talk better. Yeah. Talk good. Talk good. <laughs> <laughs> talk gooder. <laughs> talk good. Yeah. So I went there and I did that for a bit, but then I stopped going. Because you. But I find it. I find it was. Yeah, because I was just killing it. <laughs> 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 and now you teach the to- you've mastered now I teach yeah how come nobody's made Changed a movie about Toastmasters Toast. I tried we tried to make a TV series but somebody didn't buy it oh CBC wow name dropping yeah in sorry. a negative way no it's okay you just <laughs> fucked yourself I didn't say anything bad about the CBC I think they're I didn't great. say it's bad hashtag CBC is awesome dot org you can't no. <laughs> yeah but I did that's weird um, so yeah, we, we we developed a pitch about a guy in Toastmasters. Anybody wants to buy it, call up Dane Clark. Call him my Twitter. Yes, call, call him on his Twitter. On and when, Twitter. when he doesn't pick up, it's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's happening? How do we get there? But could you like as a series? But but you could yeah. like, redo that as a feature. I see like yep. a little Miss Sunshine kind of story. Oh yeah, Greg sure. Kinnear is a Toastmaster. God, I love Greg Kinnear. Yeah, he can do it. Horrible. Yeah, be even sadder because because of his age. <laughs> Not that he's elderly, but no, like, it's too late. No, <laughs> but he's like fifty now, I think. Right? He doesn't look a day over forty nine. No, he's a gorgeous man. But I guess it would just kind of it'd be like forty year old virgin styles. As a Toastmaster, like fifty year old guy that just can't talk, and he's just like. Oh, I would see him as the oh, teacher. Oh, as the teacher. Okay, that's great then. That's great. I'm in. I don't know. See, we're writing two different versions. No, no, no. I'm, I'm with you now. Okay. Yeah. So it's like... It's great. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. Moving right along. <laughs> uh, so then you... So out of that, you... Uh, the next thing you did was... Like Long Branch was probably the next... Uh, well, it's I did in a between. bunch of shorts at the film center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, did, I wrote Man vs. Minivan with Spencer and how Eunice got her baby with... I don't know why I'm saying these like anybody fucking seen them. With Lindsay. Well, now you just isolated the five people that did. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Can you see them anywhere there? Are they like on YouTube or anything? No, that's why not? the shitty thing. Can well, you put them up on YouTube or No. Them? The film center, God love them. But they don't. They As don't you speak angrily. Continue. They don't promote their shit. It's like they have this fucking huge archive of, of shorts, shorts that are worth like like they're really well produced. Yeah, and they don't have them on the internet. Why don't they have like an app like NFB does where you can just watch? I don't them? know. Canadians don't like selling their movies or having <laughs> them being be seen. Yeah, is what I've noticed. And they own them, so you can't even say, yeah, hey, I'd like to do something with it. Yeah, they'd sue me. I really want to, like I have it. You know, it's not even my, th- like I didn't, I didn't direct it or produce it or anything like that. Somebody else should do that. Yeah. There you go. See, but see? it's just, I just don't, like it's 2012. Everybody watches movies, especially shorts on the internet. It's like a crazy platform. But it's like even like sell them in there. bulk to Netflix. Sure. Yeah. Right. And like I've I've heard that they're you know they sell them to like Air Canada and stuff like that, but that's you know, yeah. that's not enough. No. No. Especially if they're just sitting there. Yeah. Do something with it. And I'm sure I don't know. I'm not trashing the no CFC or the marketing department. I just don't understand. Yeah, I'd like to know why I can't see Dane's shitty movies that you made at the film center. Everybody should be watching the shitty movies that I have writing credit on. They're not. They're not that shitty. The, just not your Those half. Not my half. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm mean, so wit- funny and witty and awkward. And then it just gets weird at one point. You're like, I didn't write that part. Yeah. That wasn't me. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, then Lindsay and I had collaborated on Long Branch and we weren't going to direct it at first. So you guys met at the CFC? Yeah, I met at the CFC in 2008. And then we made Long Branch in 2000, the winter of 2010. I think or no 2000 I don't know then you made that with CBC right yeah how'd that work how do you we got an advance we got a pre-license from CBC um so they gave us five grand in advance which you know it's kind of 
you can shoot yourself in the foot in a way because after you've made it, they'll buy it for more. Mm. But if you want it up front, then you it's need less, to but it's to get, it, it, yeah. to get it made. So we didn't care. We just wanted to get it made. And so we tried to make it for five grand, but it ended up being like eight or something like that. Can you see? I, I've seen it. It's lovely. Can you see it anywhere? Can people like yeah. pimp yourself, whore yourself if you may? Uh, Long Branch just went online in about four weeks ago. So now, so it's on Vimeo. Twelve and oh yeah, this is February. It's okay. I don't know when this is gonna. It'll be sometime in Sorry. 2013. Long, it, 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 it's on Vimeo. Okay, Long Branch went on Vimeo in November, and then it, it got it got short of the week at shortoftheweek.com, and then Vimeo saw it that, that same day and made it a staff pick. And it's got like 90,000 views in the past month. Dude, that's amazing. That's crazy. And by the time you, this is aired, it'll be 300,000. Five million. Don't go, oh, don't go sorry, super sorry, high. Sorry. Jesus I got Christ. Copy. Yeah, nah. it's okay. Maybe you're right. No, because it's really slowing down. It's down to like 100 views a day. You peaked. Like that. Oh, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. We peaked like the first week that it was on that that's thing. It's still 90,000. That's... No, it's awesome. That's nothing to sneeze at. Well, and that's what is just nice. Like, I don't know about you, but you kind of make movies. So people can see so them? So people can see them. Well, and you went so, to the CFC, so I don't know if that's true. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't think it was. But uh, so <laughs> now that people have, are seeing it, it's weird. You're just like, this is Because you're so used to people not seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it's nice just that everybody can see it. Because to your question of like... Oh, where can you see it? Most of the answer is you can't. Can you see it? You can see Long Branch on Vimeo though, right? Yeah. Like anyone can just... Anyone can. And that will be the case for the next... Unlocked. For the unforeseeable future? Uh, as far as I'm Well, it's just your personal account, right? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Check yeah. it out, Long Branch. It's really, really lovely. It's essentially... I mean, you pitch it. I don't... I'm, like, I'm just going to fuck it up. It's darling. It's darling. <laughs> no, it's about a girl um, who is on a quest for a one-night stand. But the guy that she meets lives two hours away via public transit, TTC. So she meets him like downtown at like Bloor and Bathurst and asks him if he wants to fuck. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and then they jump on the subway and she doesn't realize until they're like halfway there that he lives another hour, hour away. away. And so what she wanted was, you know, quick, dirty sex to get over her ex. But she ends up having to get to know him, and he really just wants to get to know her because he's a romantic, and she is too. But she's got her heart broken from another guy, and she thinks that you know, best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody new. No, that's not how you say it. You know what I mean? When when I said pitch it, I didn't mean ruin the entire oh. fucking story. Um, so now you don't need to see it. I, we just saved you seven minutes. Thirteen. But if you want to hear the great soundtrack, you can still watch it. Yeah, uh, watch it for the soundtrack. <laughs> no, it's really good. You should see it anyway, even though Dane's completely wrong. Sorry, I didn't it. mean to tell the whole thing. It's okay. I, I, What's wrong with me? It's okay. God. Well, don't worry. You can, you can cut that out. No, we're not going to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's reenact it. Uh, no, I didn't, mean, I, I didn't mean to shit all over your beautiful <laughs> rendition of, uh, of your show. Well, and now, and then Margot Lily, can you see Margot Lily yet? Or are you still, no. you locked it up? Yeah. Why? Because CBC has the first window. Ah. And that's why CBC had the first window for Long Branch, too, so they have it for like a year. So it's locked. Actually, that's not true. You can see it on CBC's website. How do you get, like, I've never, I mean, outside of you, I've never heard of the way you get money from CBC to do shorts. Does yeah, I probably work? shouldn't talk about that. Now you're being a dick about it. <laughs> really, you can't talk about it? We no, can... no, no, I'm sure I can. It was, it was different. There was a guy that used to work there that uh, would sometimes do it, and now there's somebody there that, that doesn't. might not do it anymore. Uh-huh. I don't know. I haven't tried. Um, I know, I know I'm not the first one. But do they have like a, like how, do, where does, when and how does it air, like do, do, do your shorts air on the CBC? Like? Yeah, it airs in this amazing time slot, Sundays at midnight on Canadian Reflections, which is a great program, it's just a shitty time slot, but um, it's great that it still exists and they haven't cut that one yet. Yeah. But, yeah. That's when it airs. So that's where you Sundays could see it. So you, still, so you can see... You can actually see it on the CBC website. Oh, through the website? Yeah. Is but it's it really streamed? hard to find. It's not. Yeah, it's streamed. Uh, Margot Lily, look it for it. It's really lovely find as Find well. it, yeah. If you like movies about dead babies, you're going to love Margot Lily. Again, don't you know you don't need to see it? Oh, yeah. 
Jesus Christ. You just made a feature. You want to tell us how that ends, too? Uh, Don't dies. Every, <laughs> that's not untrue. No, it's, it's, I have read the script, but I don't want it. <laughs> I'm good at interviews. It's okay. You should you should let Lindsay do them from now on. Yeah, no, she's a much better speaker. Yeah, and yeah. she doesn't give away the entire thing. That's true. That's true. I feel like I'm just saying with talking with you. Yeah, it's that weird. There's, yeah. That there's no like no like Ryan's here too. Yeah, but like I trust you guys. Yeah, but I don't trust the internet. It's unfortunate. So I should just pretend, that's what's go. I should yeah. just pretend, I should just yeah. pretend that I'm talking to the internet for the rest of this. <laughs> and he's guarded. <laughs> What else you got in your book? Nothing now. No. Uh, well, let's talk about. Um, so, so before we get to, because I want to get to your the movie you just finished shooting, obviously. Um, but three months ago. Three months ago. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <right. I'm>, uh, <laughs> happy, ba- happy Valentine's Day. Happy way. Valentine's Day. We should go out after a nice dinner. <laughs> we should. Um, old stock. Yeah, you did this movie through CFC Features. Yeah, whatever it was called at that point, because they keep on changing mm-hmm. the name every six yeah, months. Yeah, CFC Feature. I think it's CFC Features now. I think that's what it is now. Yeah. It was like it used to be like feature film program. Yeah, or fund or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Now you did that as just as a writer. Yeah, not to say just Hello, as a writer. Yeah, writer. <clears throat> no, that's true. You just wrote the words down for them to speak. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't matter. No. no. But but you but the other people. I mean, just for the people that. You know, aren't familiar with how that whole program mm-hmm. works. Mm-hmm. Um, in theory, I mean, it's, I, I know on paper it's not for alumni only, mm-hmm. but more often than not, it's it's usually alumni yeah. or or an alumni that's connected to whether it's a producer, a director, a writer. Yeah, yeah. is usually part of the package. I know yeah. there's a couple that haven't been. Yeah. Um, but how did that come about? Was that something you developed while you were there? I wrote, yeah, I wrote it at the film center. The script that I applied with to the film center. Um, they didn't want me to work on it anymore. They were just like, you've been working on this, you gotta write something new. And I was like, yeah, a good point. Uh, so I, did, I I wrote that one, and I cranked it out really fast, and I, I hated it. And... You gotta hate some of the stuff you Yeah, you most of it. <laughs> well, there's that as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then, you know, worked on it a little bit more. And first draft, it's rough drafts. I don't know about you, I mean, the, feels better over time but I just hate my I hate my first drafts you gotta I They're mean awful. it's a, it's a place to start yeah you said now like I used to get like more freaked out about it but now like I know that it it can't get worse so I don't know if that's true that's true right good point you can go you, you can get buried in like wrong notes oh, for and sure, then you just go sure. down the wrong path because yeah. someone yeah, else fucked with your too. head yeah yeah. yeah yeah so anyway the idea of like of old stock was really it was really new and it was really just like a first draft kind of deal and uh, Catherine Emsley who runs the Film Center program she sent it to James Gen, who was a graduate I don't know a, couple, a few years before me and he had a good TV directing resume he's only taught in the book of evil yeah 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 and f- f- call me Fitz and he's working on Seed which might be out now, now? In February. Yes, it will. It's like in January. Yeah. So you can watch it now. See, see yeah. Amanda seed. Bruegel, who is in Sex After Kids, in my yeah. film, is in as well. If you like semen, you'll love Seed. He's not talking about sailors. No, he's not. Um, so we sent it to him, and then we met, and he liked it enough and wanted to work on it. And then uh, the producers came on board. <clears throat> and I met with I met with one of the producer, Jordy. He was he was in the same, same year as me. Uh, we were in the same year, and he met, we met, I met him, like, I don't know, maybe like a week before I met James, and he was just like, yeah, we should do this, and I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, and then, so it kind of just came together, like that, and then we applied, you have to do this crazy application, and then we went in for an interview, and it was kind of kind of awkward like this, <laughs> but James is, all, James is a better speaker. So you just sat back and... Yeah, it was just like, uh-huh, mm-hmm, I typed the words... <laughs> you did the transcript? I did the transcript, yeah. <laughs> um, and then we got it in the program and then developed it for like three years. That's I, uh, The developing thing kills me. Yeah. So I don't know if I could do that. No, they're not all like that. Like mm-hmm. part of the reason was because the script was so 
Like, it didn't know what it was yet. Ah, fair enough. So, like, a lot of that is on... Discovery. Yeah, a lot of that is on me in the time that it needed to help. And then a lot of it is on, like, how many... How many hands are in the pot? Hmm, And, like, the story editor and stuff. And I went to Praxis that year, too. So I had a story editor at Praxis. And then I came back, and they set me up with another story editor. And so this was already, like, the second one, and you have to work with them. Uh, which is great. Mm-hmm. Learned a lot from that. Um, and then when we were getting close to being greenlit, they they wanted the story editor or got a job at Telefilm and couldn't be the story editor anymore. Right. And so they they needed somebody else to come on. And so there's like three throughout the whole process. Mm-hmm. And so it's just like if there was one, it would have went faster, kind of faster. Mm-hmm. But you're still like adhering to three again. three different sets of notes. Right, and which is good, in in some ways, um, and really confusing in other ways. <laughs> so without ruining mm-hmm. the entire thing in the ending, yeah. What's the what's the pitch on old stock? Uh, it's about a kid that gets in a car accident and moves into a retirement residence with his grandfather. I'm gonna stop. That's not even enough, but I'm not gonna say anymore. I like it. It's good. And when do you know what's what's going on with it right now? Uh, it's doing the festival rounds. And by festival rounds, I mean we're applying to festivals yeah. and getting rejected. <laughs> um, but actually, that's not true. This doesn't. Air, this is February. Rough, yeah, around. Okay, uh, it's playing in Santa Barbara Film Festival. Nice. Yeah. It just played at the end of January. <laughs> well, how was how, how was it received? Uh, I think it was just like just Ovations standing ovations. Yeah, 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 yeah. Throughout the entire city. And they stood in the corner and said, "Writer, yeah, you came out." And there was a parade. Down. Nice. It's really nice. They yeah. don't do that a lot with film festivals. No. So that's really special. Yeah, it was really nice. So I don't know. Just body surf me down the street. Wow. Yeah. And you're tall, so you get you need at least five people. I know. Good for you yeah. for that. So that was fun. So now I put a hit on you. Did did Lindsay steal that from you or did you steal that from Lindsay? The idea? Yeah. She said it out loud first. Oh, you, I, think you have, I think you told me the story, yeah. Oh, the Tell, idea? For the people that, oh. for the interweb. <clears throat> we, were, we were lying in bed watching, this is, this is PG. We were lying in bed watching Sons of Anarchy, and it was, I don't know, do you watch that show? I have we not. talked about this. Yeah. Um, and. I plan to. Yeah, it's good. Maybe by now I have. It's good. If you like, you know, soap operas about biker gangs with gay undertones, then you'll love Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign me up. Um, so anyway, they they hire like hitmen in that all the time because that's what biker gangs do. And anyway, she just she paused it and turned to me and she's like, "Hey, can I tell you something?" I'm like, yeah, sure. She's like, "I put a hit on you," and I just fucking I just burst out laughing. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And then it became like one of our little couple inside jokes for like the next couple of days, and then. We were like, hey, that could be a funny movie. And then we... And then she called the hit off. Yeah, and then she called the hit off. Because she wanted to get yeah, off the project. Because I, I, said it could, I said it was a good idea. But if it doesn't pan out... Then the hit's back on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, then we just we kept thinking about it and developed it into a short end of feature. And you just finished shooting. Well... F- screw the time travel shit. You just Three finished shooting ago. it. No, yeah, but yeah. you just finished shooting it like literally a week ago, right? Yeah, on Wednesday. So less than a week ago. But yeah, but so, and how many, was it 12 days? Yeah. Have, and, you, ever, have you ever heard of it? such a huge production schedule? <laughs> I, hey, I shoot 15, all right? That's what I, uh, I don't screw around. <laughs> no less than 15. No less than 15 on the German Lund joint. Yeah. Uh, how did you find, did you find it was like super rushed? Uh, not super. Like, another day would have been great. I mean, like, sure, another three days. Another ten days would have been awesome. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't painful because we tailored the script to be shot in a really low amount of days. Like, most of it takes place inside one apartment. And then, so we had ten days in the apartment and then two days outside. One day in a restaurant and one day in a condo. Um, so the whole plan was make it really shootable or production friendly at least after we found the location so it wasn't crazy to shoot all of that in the short amount of time Um, it would have helped to have a little bit more but 
I don't know. It was exciting. And so for you, what was the big difference between going from doing directing a short to directing a feature? Uh, we'd only ever shot three days in a row before. Long Branch was three days. Margo was two days. One day. Um, and so this was 12. So obviously it's, you know, 10 times the pages. And I don't know the math. Yeah. But however many more days. But the, was it was an endurance thing? Did you find... Um, yeah, I think I'm, I still feel half asleep from the shoot, but it was endurance. It was balancing. It's a, it's a, it was harder balancing a bigger story mm. because you have like however many more scenes, obviously, and this is so obvious, but that's just what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you just have like 70 more pages kind of deal and different arcs to deal with and that many more scenes and making sure that they're all lining up and doing what they're supposed to do and keeping everything straight in your head and on the page and dealing with bigger crew and more experienced cast like the cat like you know the cast have had like a million days on set yeah and we'd had four well yeah that was weird well I mean the directors are I mean especially you know, and your first couple of projects. Oh, it, yeah. Is that you're the least experienced person on set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the irony. Yeah, you must have found that with, like... I mean, you have more experience on set than I do, but you were still working with, like, TV oh, stars God, yeah, and film yeah, stars. Yeah, and yeah. these people like, work non-stop, so it's yeah, like, who, yeah. the, who the fuck am I to tell them to, yeah. to do this and that? I mean, outside <laughs> like, of... Yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like yeah. I'm going to do just fine. Yeah. I know how to... Yeah, I got it. Chuckles. I know how to just go mind. stand over there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Go watch I, I the see monitor. Tell me I look pretty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just let me know when when my when my my bad side shows. Up. Yeah, yeah. I think that's true, but I think it's like um, it's interesting. I had something I had to say. I totally lost it. So with, with how's it work? Because you're you and Lindsay are the team. Yeah. So how's that work on set? Um, better than I thought it would. <laughs> Very yes. diplomatic. Yeah. No, it's good. Um, because we have different personalities, like she's more aggressive than I am. Nice. Believe it or not, I know you're all just like this guy's so aggro. <laughs> <laughs> she must. She must not be. Um, but she is. She's more aggressive and outspoken uh, than I am. And if if we were the same, then it would, we wouldn't be able to work together. Right. I no, think no, it no, would you, be like you'd bash heads. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully. But I mean, it, it, it works because we write it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. so we have like all of our arguments and stuff, usually writing the script. At that stage. Yeah. You're and, and they're not page. like, they're like the healthy arguments, right? Yeah. The working it out kind of deal. Um, so because we develop that together, we're on the same page. Yeah. And then well, when it comes to the days, you know, there's things that we don't agree on. Um, but how do you work it out when, when that comes We up just up? talk it out. So it takes forever on set. No, I mean, no. No? We didn't have that much time. Like, our biggest fight was probably, like, ten minutes mm-hmm. on this one, and it was on lunch. Was it really awkward? Because everyone was standing around just staring at you. No, we walked away. And that's when they know. They're like, ah, oh, fuck. They're, yeah. They're going to go either have sex the kids are fighting or again. fight. Yeah. But it was good. And, like, there were really only, like, two of those. And I find, like, those are more growing pains. Yeah. than anything and it was really just figuring out how to work together I mean I think for me it's like because I, I have a guy that I sometimes write with yeah um, and I think the trick is that you've got to and I'm sure this and you I mean you can speak to it is is if you're going to partner up with someone they have to bring something that you can't do yeah otherwise what's the point yeah it's like then they just get in your way I think oh, so yeah, it's like sure. they want the, you so is that, I guess it's the aggression thing so then what the hell do you bring to the table is what I want to know oh Besides um, charisma and charm. That's it. And slight awkwardness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those things are all in the script. <laughs> and they're all on the screen. So I'm there. <laughs> and the shit's always awkward. Um, what do I bring? It's just blending both of our sensibilities. Mm. Right? And it's like, I'm of the mindset, if both of us think that it's good, then at least, like, two other people will think that it's good. So, you know, like, you still have... It's a good vetting process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, only two other people. But, um, yeah, it's nice. And it's nice not 
and working alone, it's nice having that person challenge you. And like she challenges me every day of my life. Um, with love, with right? Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and no, we just challenge like the story back and forth until we both agree on it. And I find like my favorite stuff that I've written is with her because it's been worked on. And like I find like my stuff, you know, it's just one person, I guess, it's just one brain. And like it's fine um, and everything. But I, I just don't love it as much. As you love her. As I love her. Nice. Yeah. Look, this is the Lindsay Love Fest. We'll have her in at some point, but not with you. No. Because I got to <laughs> grill her because she won't be awkward. She'll be aggressive. That's she'll true. scare me. She'll just... i am like, I have, a, I have a jar full of five questions. She'll be like, go oh, fuck your questions. I brought my own jar. I'm like, don't tell her she can't bring her own jar. <laughs> she won't listen. Fair enough. Yeah. Speaking of the jar. Yeah. So you just, the rule is you gotta, you gotta pull it up, you gotta give it to me. I gotta read it. Okay. Then I might have to modify it because sometimes the questions aren't, are specific to certain disciplines. Uh, I kind of already asked something like this. I need you to pull again. You're just waiting until I pull the one you want me to Yeah, pull. well sometimes I just, I just make it up anyway. Right. Yeah, I guess nobody can see that. Did you have a childhood nickname? Um. Besides Lanky. <laughs> I had a bunch. What was, were they? What was your favorite and least favorite? Uh, why can't I think? My dad's friends used to call me something stupid. Stretch? No. Were you always talking hound. about hound? Yeah. My dad. My dad's friend. I'm from Peterborough. Okay. And my dad's friends are uh, from Peterborough. Peterborough. Yeah. Good story, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, they give each other like everybody Big has names. nicknames. And just like the weirdest shit, like one guy's name is Cakes, the other guy's name is Ice. And like for the longest time, I didn't know they had other names. <laughs> My dad has like three names and like people would call for him sometimes and they'd just be like, yeah, is Benner there? I'm like, who the fuck is Benner? <laughs> and apparently that was my dad. And he had, they just had like a bunch of different people had different names. Anyway, they called me Cakes and Ice. They called me Hound. Because one time when I was a kid, I guess, I came in and to the room and I was just like, hey, I had like, I don't know, candy or some shit. And I was like, hey, I, I hound it instead of saying I found it. <laughs> and then they called me hound. Because of and speech impediment? Dumb story. Yeah, because of my speech impediment. Yeah. So what was it? What was another? You, you had multiples. Did you have one that like friends called you? Well, friend, like I get called... Some friends call me Dave. Some friends call me Dean. Uh, uh, get Danger. Danger? Yeah. That one's kind of funny. Because you're not dangerous at all? not dangerous at all. Um, it's one of them ironic ones. Yeah. Like Shorty. Irony. Uh, but no, I never got like, oh, somebody called me Gumby. Because he's lanky. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah, got, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when I was a kid... <laughs> And my yours? Dad, this is this is going to be terrible. My dad will never listen to this, so I'm not worried about that. But when I was a kid, and it was just me and my dad, and he wanted to watch porn, yeah. he would send me up to my room and say he was watching Gumby and Pokey movies. Oh, my God. And I was like, and, and so I didn't know what he was talking about at first, and then I saw like the toys, and I was like, and then one day I was in my room, and I decided, well, I can watch Gumby and Pokey movies. And so I walked in on my dad masturbating. No. Yeah, when I was like eight. I came, oh, I came down the stairs and I could see and I could hear like that doesn't sound like uh, the moans and the stuff yeah that's not going to be in Pokey he doesn't know I saw him right like, I never well, I never screamed like, I just saw it and I went back upstairs yeah and probably like, right. died a little yeah. yeah yeah. so there's that happened to me nice I haven't thought about that in forever hey look at that bringing up repressed so memories that's <laughs> what so I'm here for yeah. thanks dad thanks for that yeah sorry dad if you ever do figure out how to use a computer and listen to this he won't <laughs> thank god yeah well, there's that. Yeah. What was your I'm really name? sorry that I said that, Dad. Is that wrong? No. He shouldn't have been jerking off while I was home. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> this was terrible. What's All right. happening? The next question. <laughs> These are the things that come up in therapy with Jeremy Lalonde. <laughs> My own therapy, apparently. Oh, next question? Yeah, now number two. Because <laughs> I don't want to think about my dad jerking off anymore. I got to... 
Where were you the first time you saw your father, Matt? No, that's not the question. <laughs> I never have. Do you have a favorite movie that a lot of people hate? Um, like a guilty pleasure movie that people just don't get? Uh, or do you hate a movie that a lot of people love? Yeah, I'll go with the first one. Um, Serendipity. Ah. A lot of people think that one's corny. But you like it? I love it. Yeah? Yeah. What do you love about it? Oh, it's just so goddamn romantic. Piven? Piven? Piven's hilarious. Is it back when Piven and Cusack were still friends? Yeah. Just charming on screen, those two. Um, it's just a great little love story. It's cute. And the fate, the whole fate thing. I think it's well structured, too. And I appreciate it. Do you that. admire that in it? I admire the structure. I had a friend that worked as a production assistant on that. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, because someone was shot here. And he said Cusack was a douchebag. Yeah, I wouldn't want to meet him. Yeah. Because I, I say my favorite movie, Say Anything. Hmm. So I, I love Cusack. With the, the Lloyd Dobler? Yeah. Um, my wife has a crush on Lloyd Dobler. Yeah, I, I don't know. So do I. Right. Yeah. Um, but what, you, I can't, you, can't, and you can't remake that movie because it's like an iPod, right? At best? Oh, yeah, totally. You're holding up like an iPad, maybe? Yeah. I mean, they will. Really? Probably not when we're alive. I don't think so. I think the I think it's past. I think if you're gonna redo that movie, you done it's it, it's happening now. Yeah. You don't see like teen comedies like that being redone. Really, it's like it's like tentpole That's movies. That's true. I, I think the only stuff you're seeing redone and remade are things that become can become franchises. Yeah, you're right. Really, right? Yeah. Well, I guess it's not true either. It's probably I guess. an example, but I can't. Like hairspray got remade. You're not yeah, really yeah, making. Yeah. Uh, although, but those are just like big musicals too. They're bigger. Sabrina. Sabrina. Yeah, yeah. They do get remade. I'm wrong. Yeah, but you're wrong. Like, Thank you, Ryan. He is wrong. Yeah. What would you? What, what? So would you remake? No. No. Ever you never you never remake any movie. Oh. Yeah, if I had the opportunity, sure. What would you remake? Shit, that's not a question. Yeah, that's not. You didn't pull that out. I don't. You. This is my goddamn show. I can make up the rules. I, oh, I can. I can God, add, amend them true. to the questions. That's true. <laughs> um. I don't know. You go first. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. I what think. movie would I remake? Yeah. Oh, God. I I mean, I don't think I'd want to remake something that's really great, because what's the point? You'd want know. to remake something that wasn't done well. Yeah. Or that it had a great idea and they didn't go further enough with it. Yeah. And I don't know what my answer is to that. Yeah. I think I'd want to... Ah, now it's just going to be dead air and awkward. <laughs> when we both try to come up with an answer to this. I'd love to see, like... Yeah, man. Everything that I can think of is already really great. Like the apartment would be awesome, but the apartment's the like, apartment's don't great. Don't what bother. would you do with that? Nothing. I would just like I would just watch many iterations. Like I would you watch. Just, did you even watch it? Over I would still over just again. watch a modern version of it. I watched the if first. They didn't screw it up. It was like just the exact same thing. Yeah. Like if it was like psychoed, <laughs> but just with like different then, people. Who would you recast? Who would you cast in it? Uh. Oh man. Somebody charming. <laughs> Good answer. I don't know. How do you beat Jack London? He's great. I first saw the movie. It was like it was in film school, and it was I borrowed it from someone. Yeah. And it was one of those days. Where I was like I couldn't sleep. I got up. It was like six o'clock in the morning. I was like, yeah. oh, I'll pop this, and maybe it'll help me go back to sleep. Yeah. But it was just <laughs> like, and then I had like a lecture at eight thirty or nine. I just walked in going like my mind was blown. Yeah. It was like the rest of the day was just radio silence. It was just like. That just blew me. It was just one of those times. I remember it was one of those experiences where fun, finishing a movie. Same thing as like the first time I saw Annie Hall. I was just like, yeah. what the fuck was that? Yeah. You know? And because the apartment's amazing because it's so fucking sad and funny and yeah. heartwarming. And it's well, just it pushed like, the envelope too. Like I used to think, you know, I was like, oh, it's black and white. It'll be all cheesy. Just like uh, kissing. Yeah. But, you know. Dude, There's razor blades. Yeah. He like pulls when that everybody's little, banging in his apartment. Yeah. He's like, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and he's the saddest little bastard around. And you know, because what, what year was that movie? It was in the 50s, right? I think it was 54. Something? I'm like, just making but, that shit up. Because you just, I mean, I think a lot of people, are, at that point, like, my, like, my thoughts on what movies of that era were was like it was probably based on like the television of that era which is like so da, 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 yeah. da, da, you know that kind of stuff so it was like very kind of slightly cheesy yeah, yeah. so it's like I think you know once I started watching good movies from that era it kind of surprised me because I and they just seemed really ahead of their time oh, yeah. As the apartment in, is still like current you can't touch like that universal movie. yeah the universal love story yeah, you don't want to remake the apartment. No, I don't at all. But I, I can't know. think of like one that was 
I'm trying to think of a bad. Okay, we're gonna. It, it didn't come out of the jar. We don't That's have true. to yeah. do this. Fuck so. your question. I don't have to go that far with it. All right, oh, yeah, next. Mm. Uh, oh, how do you know when you get the right take? Uh, Lindsay tells you? Yeah, Lindsay tells <laughs> you. She's like, yeah, that's good, dear. Uh, it's just it's just a feeling. Do you convert? The, the, do you guys confer with each other on that? Or do yeah. you look at each other you know? Yeah. And sometimes, yeah, if we look at each other, we're just like, yeah. <laughs> that's the face you we make? We can move. Yeah. Yeah. But then sometimes, you know, sometimes she'll be like, yeah, no, I want another one. Sometimes I'll be like, I want another one. Um, but most of the time, we're usually on the same page. And, it's and you keep going until you're both happy, I assume. Uh, yeah. What's, yeah. Is there like but a magic? It's never, it's never a crazy amount yeah. of takes. What's the most you have time? Fair enough. Yeah. Like I saw on, on, on Hit, what was the most? What, did you have like an average number? Uh, well, the average is pro- probably 2.5. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Like for a lot of them, like when we ha- when we got it, because sometimes like there'd be like like you can't count like focus screw ups. No, no, no. shit like that. <clears throat> so I mean, like I think the most anything ever went up to was like nine, but that was like a complicated. Shot. And that's because of Ashmore, right? Yeah. That guy. That guy is dumb. No, he's amazing. What's well, like working with him? With with Sarah and Aaron Gray. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had like something bad to say about them, but I don't. They were so just like professional. And like they killed it, we wouldn't have been able to pull off twelve days if they weren't so good at what they do. And they're in the. I mean, here, the, the benefit too to working with people that are seasoned in television is yeah. that they can memorize shit. Oh my god, it's crazy! Because we were like most days, it's it said on the call sheet it was like nine, ten pages. I know that's not true because then it would be a hundred and twenty page script, but it was only eighty. Yeah. But it just seems like every day yeah, was yeah, like yeah, ten yeah. pages or it's hovering around there. And like a lot of the movie is them in a room talking back and forth, yeah. right? And like sometimes it is actually like there are some pages that are like five or six in a row, and they would just, you know, they were so good and they'd rehearse it a couple times like with themselves. That was really good too, is that they like each other and they got along, and so they worked together. Had they met before? No, no. Um, so that was, you know, you didn't know how that was going to work. Like, we didn't audition them either. Mm-hmm. We just offered it. We offered it to Aaron first, and then we offered it to Sarah. And without having met them or anything like that, too. So it was a, it was a gamble all around. But, you know, we done our homework. Hey. And known that they were good people. And then they're Wasn't not going to right? show up and be jackasses. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, they would not. I mean, they're not going to do your, a movie for the budget you're doing. For if, sure. If they're going to show up and be a dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you One would hope. Say, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> yeah, um, keep, imagine if you're the kind of actor who's just like, you get that off, you're like, I'm just going to go fuck with them. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go <laughs> fuck with them for a couple weeks. That's what I'm I'm going to get paid tip and just fuck with them. <laughs> Screw it. Yeah. Screw it. You <laughs> come back and like, booyah! Yeah. You so, put <laughs> the saddest <laughs> prank ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they were great. They were super pro. And yeah, lovely. I had nothing about it. Sarah gave me this shirt. She did? Yeah. As a gift? Yeah. Or because she felt bad for you? I don't know. And then you stained it up. Both. You know, the pit's going on? See? Good for you. Look at you. No shame. I appreciate that. Yeah. I do. I am I good? Oh no, you got. There's something. A little I bit. Just be like, oh yeah, just a little bit. Look at that. See, we're all open here. Yeah. If you're gonna show your pit stains, I'm gonna show mine. It's so hot in February. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Number four. Oh. Look at you. Some people try to peek. You like close your eyes and everything. I really appreciate that. Hey. You're you're a good kid. Oh. <laughs> I don't care what Mark Martin Curry says about you. <laughs> This one doesn't count for you either. Okay. Um, do you find there's much of a difference between um, like creating in the writer's room versus creating on set? Like what's... Yes. So what's, uh, what's the difference for you? Um, Besides being naked on set. Oh, right. Um, 
I like writing more because you have more time to figure things out. Less pressure. Less pressure. People aren't staring at you People going. People aren't staring at you. The clock isn't ticking. You don't hear every second going by. <laughs> uh, so you really love being on set. <laughs> yeah, it's like my favorite place to be. No, I, I like it more than I did, but the You gotta take something used to. Still, oh yeah. There's no practicing. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I prefer that time in the writing process to think about it and work with it and try different things. But then when you're on set, it's like you kind of have to make fast decisions and you can't just experiment. You can't just be like, you know, we're going to try this one in Italian. <laughs> and then this <laughs> that's one the choice you sometimes topless. Yeah. 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 Well, especially when you're making a movie in 12 days, you don't have, yeah, you've yeah, got yeah. that kind of, yeah, you're executing. You do on your relaxed 15 day schedule. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> you just fuck around for one of those. Yeah. It's like, let's just do months. everything backwards. <laughs> yeah. Old backwards day. Yeah. Just for fun. We're not going to use any of this. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's what I prefer, I guess, is the time mm -hmm. to problem solve on on the page versus not having as much of it on the screen. You? Oh, um, I like a lot, but I mean, it's the same thing. So I'd like, I mean, I'd love to, on future stuff, to have more time. And I think, and, it, and it's not even just for me, it's more for like, like for example, for like, the film I just finished was Sex After Kids. Mm -hmm. And with that one, it's just like my crew worked their asses off. Yeah, yeah. Like they were just on their feet nonstop yeah. all day long, just killing it, right? Yeah. And luckily with that movie, we didn't shoot consecutive days. We were only shooting right. two two days here, three like days here. Mostly, right? Yeah, so it's like, I mean, if they had to shoot that movie the way we shot that movie 15 days in a row, mm -hmm. I think they just, the amount of energy they were putting out, just, I don't know if they would have been able to sustain it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just because I don't know what human could. You know, we were shooting, you know, my, my first film we shot in 15 days, but it was, you know, documentary style. So, you know, we were done early most days. Most right. scenes are like one setup, two setups, because right. it doesn't make sense for them to be more. Yeah, yeah. We shot this movie with the same amount of days, but, you know, we're doing 20, 30 setups a day. Yeah. You know, so it was like they just killed the shit out of it. Yeah. Um, so for me, it's like more time just to give the crew more time to do stuff. I didn't feel super rushed on it. Mm -hmm. Um and I think also, but also I think maybe for the actors, they might have want to have more time to do scenes and, and to not have to like do so much in a day. Yeah. It's more of that for me moving forward. It's just like having a bigger budget to be able to pay people properly. Yeah. Um, so for me and myself that I can take off time to do stuff and not have to worry about, sure. you know. Yeah, getting paid at all would just be awesome. It's just nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, so cool. it's one of them luxuries. Yeah. 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 One day. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, I like being on set. I like, I think I'm, I'm way more comfortable now yeah. with it. Um, and also it's like, I've worked with the same people. I, I've worked right. with the same crew, like the core, core crew for, for the last couple of things. So yeah, it's like, yeah. I'm comfortable with them and how we work and we break stuff out before. Mm -hmm. And with actors, um, especially with actors that I worked with before, it's even easier. And I usually stay the head of the actor's way until, unless I need to come in and, and, and finesse or, or tweak, but. I kind of, I, I, in, in some sense, I think I figured out kind of my style, yeah. at least how I act on set, and I, and it's worked so far. What do, you, what do you call your style? Getting the fuck out of people's way. Right. Hiring good people, smart people, yeah. and, and and letting them do the work. Yeah. Uh, and then that's fair. Like you hire good actors, and it's like what seventy five percent. I don't know. Some people say it's fifty percent of the job is done. Ninety. I say it's like close to seventy five to ninety. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you know when you come in, you know when to like give a correction, and and yeah, you know, yeah. don't don't not offer suggestions, no, but no. it's like in theory you hired them for a reason. Yeah. Um, when well, they still want to be directed too, right? Yeah. And that's the thing you can't just be like, oh yeah, everything was perfect. Yeah, and you never just do one because that's no, rude for them too. And you all, you know they want you want to make sure. I mean, from I, I always like to make sure they're happy with what they're doing. Yeah. And that we want to, and we want to play. We want to expand. We don't, I don't want to just sit back and say it's perfect. Move on. It's yeah. Like, even if we do one and I think it's amazing, we're always going to do another one because yeah. maybe there's something else we could try. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I'd say my style is staying out of people's way and, mm -hmm. and respecting the craft yeah. enough to let people kind of play and, and, and show me something first before I go in and start to sabotage it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that. New? Same. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, not, not exactly. Not exact same, but... 
were you watching me the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it is better to watch because I find, you know, this this the feature was a great learning experience as far as um, like not over directing. Mm. Like at the start, I found like we were giving them like, too much information, kind of deal, and it was just like they don't they got it. It's kind of just like the best thing to do is let them see see how they do it, and then kind of just adjust that. Yeah, and like they're they're always in the right ballpark. It's just tailoring it I'll to tweak here, tweak there. Yeah, yeah, to exactly what you think. And you know, some are off, but most of the time, it's it's nice seeing what they do. Mm -hmm. And like blocking too was interesting because like we'd give the general like here's what we're thinking. Like you start here, move here, end up here. And then like they would try that out. Sometimes it would work. Sometimes it would be like, uh, it's better. It feels more natural if I start here, go there, and then end up over yonder. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, okay, yeah, that's great. We'll then, make that work because that is a better idea. Yeah. And I find like, you know, there's some directors who are just like, no, that's the way it is. And like and some directors, it's the some directors think it's like, yeah, you think like directly. Here's how I move my camera. You have to make that work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's some direct, like, I don't know whether my method is bad directing or collaborative. I like to just say it's collaborative. collaborative? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's collaborative. Yeah, if that feels right. And, like, you know, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Like, of course, if they want to change the scene entirely, then that's not right. But if by moving away, you have to be in charge. it makes better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, and, and the same thing, because that's the one thing, like, I still, I'm still working on like I think this will be the kind of thing that I keep on working on is is visuals and that yeah. kind of stuff. This one thing I, 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 I try to challenge myself on more and more as I go along mm -hmm. is to tell stories more visually and, and rely less on dialogue. Yeah. Uh, and part of that that is like is the is the blocking scenes, especially because you know, despite my efforts, my, my scripts are all still wordy and they're dialogue heavy. Yeah, same here. So it's a matter of like, and then that's one thing I learned just, just for the sheer mechanics of being on set too, is like get in there and block early mm -hmm. and then see how they, as opposed to like, let's set up the lights the way we want to shoot it. And then the actors show up was like, actually, I want to go over here. Because yeah. that's when you start being a dick with the actors and saying, well, I don't want to, we can't do it that way because we set up the lights for here. Yeah. Where if you just gone in and been like, what's more comfortable, what's most natural? Totally. And then... Once you see what they want to do and what feels right to them, then you can either say, well, no, we can't do it that way because of this, yeah. but we can do this. And then you can plan and set up, well, they're in their makeup and hair and that kind of stuff that yeah. we set up. Because that takes forever, forever, right? Forever. Especially Ashmore. Guys. Right? Yeah. The girls are quick. Yeah, Sarah uh, Canning was quick. Ashmore just always wanted more makeup. What a guy. Less is more, Ashmore. Less is more. <laughs> But yeah, and I want to get better at uh, the technical stuff, because that's not that's not like either of our fortes kind of deal. It's like we're more into performance. You and know, both like you and Lindsay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a shame. I know. Do you have a good DP? Yeah, then you're fine. I know. That's kind of like, and that's that's the collaborative part too, right? It's like we know where we want the camera to go. Yeah. But like, I don't know, I don't know my lenses yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know the basics. But What'd you shoot on? Uh, Epic. Right, yeah. Yeah. The same as same thing. Yeah. Nice. Copying you. It's okay. Yeah. Go right ahead. <laughs> Last there's question. Oh, there's a lot. One stuff. more. Because the release two didn't count. Uh it doesn't count as an actor question. Go. Go. Sorry. Dead air. I got two. That'll work. Right there. What's your favorite ice cream? Uh, anything with cookie dough. So just cookie dough then? Yeah. <laughs> My favorite ice cream is just cookie dough. Yeah. Because I don't eat, I don't eat much ice cream. I'm kind of lactose intolerant, but not to the point, not to the point where I won't. Where you do, if I you, really want it. You don't give a shit enough to yeah, not destroy yeah, yeah. your body a little exactly, bit. Exactly. Exactly. Can you just take something for that? Uh, it never works. No, I used to have to take lactate pills when I was a kid. Yeah, I tried those, but they didn't work. Cause like my my we don't need to get into this. Whatever we will. My intolerance isn't like the you bowel blow it a little things. bit. Yeah, it's more just like snotty. Nice. Yeah. So but, lactate doesn't lactate is more for like digestion. So if you're on like a date that's not for, going well, you'd have the ice cream because you're like fuck. Yeah. You. Oh god. Yeah, because then I get cold symptoms. Yeah, it's like, I gotta go like, home. Oh man, I'm coming down with a cold. So I go and like. Chug a liter of milk. 
That's your, that's your finishing move on a date. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't it. like you. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, do you want dessert? No, I just get a glass of milk. Yeah. <laughs> Job. Whole milk, if you got it. Yeah. It's true. Gross. It's a cookie, though, though. Yeah. But only when you want to, like, mess with your system. Yeah. Can you do, you know what's, uh, but it's just, so it's dairy then. Have you ever tried? We um, we're fancy and have like the Vitamix crazy blender. Oh, nice. <clears throat> if you ever get something like that, or a yeah. food processor might do this as yeah. well. I have a blender. You, oh, need, you need a superpower. You, yeah. need, you need the, like the gotcha. horsepower. Gotcha. But anyway, you can, you can make a nice like frozen treat out of bananas. Mm. Like a, a puree but bananas. Just bananas. Look at you. The you're allergic to bananas, right? <laughs> Stop saying, stop saying the B word. Really? My daughter's allergic. Oh, right. Just, you just don't like them because you... Anyway, frozen bananas, a little bit of uh, cocoa powder. Yeah. That's it. You pure, it's like the rich, it tastes so rich and sweet, oh, but there's no like sugar at all. It's just been dairy, been dairy free, nice. so you might not snot up. Right. But you still enjoy a nice rich treat. That sounds delicious. Next time you come over to my house, yeah. not that you've ever been over to my no, house. No, but next time. And you're going to come over, I'm going to make you a nice, <laughs> nice dairy-free, delicious treat, and you, and you won't have to snot at all. That sounds delicious. But then, you, but you have to put out because... Yeah, because I don't have an excuse to leave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's well where we'll played. wrap it up. Well played. <laughs> so, so, so to wrap up, you've got two options. Um, as is the tradition on my show, you either have to display some kind of talent or freak like ability, as it were, yeah. or you have to arm wrestle me. Oh, those are your options. I want to do both. You can do both. Can I do both? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third time, you guys want to go home? Yeah, no, we're good. All right, my body makes a really weird sound. This, this is this is my chest. This is my this is my chest right okay. here in between where pecs would be. Yep, I can see your chest. It's hollow. There's nothing in there. Can I knock? Yeah. I. You, you got to do your finger. Jesus Christ, that's yeah. not a sound effect. Dave's a freak. Um, there's probably other stuff, but that, that, that's got the best audio cue. So you are Hollow Man. Yeah. Yeah. Points for the Kevin Bacon reference. Now do we wrestle? Now we wrestle. <laughs> I don't wanna, I'm scared. What if I break you like hollow bones? Are you like a... <laughs> no, you will. I just want to lose. I just want to make you feel good on your I show. Don't know. I, don't, I don't have a great track record. I'm, t- I'm, not, I'm not, you know, formally trained. All right, Ryan Kennison. Good. What? Oh, this is a good one. Oh, I don't lose. This is, I, I always apologize for this section because the people that are just listening, they have no idea. We've oh, got a, yeah, yeah. I'm doing moderately okay. Oh, you're really. Oh, taking over. Over Jesus. the top. Over the top. Now I gotta try it. Now over the top. Oh! I felt and that I there then. I won. I never say well, who won on the audio podcast. I apologize. Sometimes it's obvious. Jeremy won. Jeremy's the winner. Fair and square. We both have delicately soft hands. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, it was a pleasure doing no, that. No, I really enjoyed Despite that. the strain in my arm. I'm going to think about that later. <laughs> yeah, there's a bit of strain. Yeah, we'll yeah. do okay. Give us some hugs. All right, so uh, so you've been listening to Five Questions with Jeremy Lon. My guest is Dane Clark. Thank you for Any, having me. You want a whore at the end? You're... You have whores here? Yeah, after. For after the show. Yeah, that'd be great. The after. Yeah. The after party whores. Um, if you like the show, like us on Facebook, tell your friends, and if you want to add any questions to the jar, you can go right ahead and just put them on the Facebook wall or tweet them to me at Lalon Jeremy, and uh, we'll do it up. That's me. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Determining the distribution channels for your video, if you're creating a corporate training video, then your likely choice for distribution would be internally within your company. Now, here's a number of video distribution options that you need to consider. Will your video be used for a television ad? Is your video meant for internal distribution and for your company only? Is the video going to be posted on your company website? Or what about your company intranet? Is the video meant to be posted online and shared via social media? Do you plan to post a video on YouTube? And what about all those other uh, online video websites such as Daily Motion, Vimeo, Hulu, Vio, Ebombs World, the YouTube, Blip TV? Your know, final thing to consider about video distribution is the format. Is a hard copy of the video required, or does the video only need to exist in digital format?